good? Uh, you sure? I'm just saying, um, I'll watch the camera. I'll be doing some fortnight. I'll be doing some Please yeah. Uh, it's too late now. Improv. <laughs> no, it has to be based on movie line. Movie line? Our favorite movie line. I'll play in the pop. I, George and Giovanna, had a dream. No, no, we still have your ID, so we have your own ID. Okay, I don't want to be here. No, I'm not everybody present today. First of all, I'm going to keep on you in. Uh, first of all, I'd ask everyone please to turn their phones off. Uh, you know the story, right? Yeah. The only phone that ever went off during one of these was mine. <laughs> That's a true story. I'm turning my phone off. My security man, Victor, will be on the lookout for phones. Uh, Victor, give us a wave. Cheers for Victor! Woo! All right, so just two quick, just two quick things. Uh, phones off, and if you have to leave, if you have to leave, please do not get up and leave while a monologist is performing. Please wait for them to finish their monologue before you get up and leave or Victor will hurt you. 
Okay. Uh, in terms of procedures, how we're going to work this is that who, who's supposed to be here? Uh, we weren't going to start with that. Okay. Um, okay. How this is going to work is this. Each contestant, before they appear on the stage, will stand over by the piano where Sydney, let's hear it for Sydney. Yeah. Our intrepid announcer will give you a little introduction to each monologue. I would also ask you, please, let's say when Renee gets up to perform, once she leaves her chair, she is no longer Renee. So don't, don't say, go, go, Renee, because she's not Renee, she's her character. Let her be her character, okay? When each monologue is, is finished, they will proceed off the stage from stage right. Anybody know which way that is? It's this way, where they will receive from Sydney their certificate, which is? Suitable for framing. Who's what? Suitable for framing. Very good. So before we start, I would like to ask each of the contestants, how many of you have never actually performed on stage before? How cool is that? That's, let's have a nice hand for our new guys here. Okay. Uh, and by the way, let's hear it for our stage crew, Mr. Raymond Chuck. Dave, while you're up, Dave, do me a favor. Turn off the house lights. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, Dave is. Let's hear it for Dave. Victor, right, I now turn you over to the event staff. I'm done. Guys, good luck. I'm proud of you. I'm going to be focused. We have some seats down here. <laughs> Claudius, the new king of Denmark, explains to his subjects why the last king's suspicious death is of no concern to them at all. My loyal subjects, I know that there have been some <laughs> difficult times out there lately. We are all Earning right now after my brother's death. But this, this is the time for this nation to come together. Let's be honest, we all liked him. He had a great beard. <laughs> I was always envious of that beard. Not so envious that I would kill him. Let's put that issue to bed. My opponents out there always want to turn this into a political issue. And I think it's become a distraction for us. Read my lips. I did not have murderous relations with my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I am glad that we can put that issue to bed. And I hope that the people who are saying those things enjoy their time being tortured. <laughs> now, I'm not here to talk about my personal wife, I mean life, but then again, people have been talking, so yes, I have married Gertrude and mm, she's a stone cold fox. <laughs> Once she was back on the market, I knew I was going to have to act fast. And some of you sickos out there think it's a little weird that I married my brother's wife. Two whole days after he died. <laughs> You should be ashamed of yourself, and you will be tortured. <laughs> so, to sum up, time of great personal tragedy, Gertrude is a stone-cold fox. If you don't like it, well, I hope you enjoy the spikes. And I'm lowering taxes, which will exempt me from any of your moral concerns forever. Now, 
my new wife would like to say a few words. Okay. <laughs> Nicole is very insecure about her looks, especially her weight. She's getting ready for a party and asks her boyfriend how she looks. Okay, how does this look? I mean, they said to dress casual, so I thought this is pretty casual. You don't think it's too casual, do you? Good. Is it too dressy? Okay. Do I look fat? Oh my god, Jeff! <laughs> no, you didn't say no, you said, oh, no. Ah, uh, it's a pretty loaded word. It means, yes, you look like a bloated pig, only I better not tell you that. Why didn't you just say, Nicole, you have a lie down on the silver platter with an apple shoved in your mouth? You know what? Forget it. I'm not going. I don't need people trying to pop me with toothpicks. <laughs> Liar! <laughs> Are you sure? I mean, really, really, absolutely, positively, no doubt in your mind that I don't look fat. Okay, Jeff, does my hair look alright? <laughs> a self-proclaimed semi-outcast, shares her fears and strategies for an upcoming field trip. I mean, not much has changed since then. It's like the movie Groundhog Day. Every school day is the same. Lies is mean to me. Chat ignores me. And I try to find ways to amuse myself in this institution of monotony. Anyway, I have to confess that for the first time in my life, I am grappling with the problem. And, uh, teen problem. I am, after all, only human, as much as I hate to admit it. I'm talking about the impending class trip to the art museum. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. A field trip to the art museum may seem like no big deal, but to a slightly different semi-outcast like myself, it is a major deal. There are many critical factors. One, who you sit next to on the bus. It's a long ride, and not to mention, everyone is going to be judging you for who you sit with. Two, find a group to hang out with all day. The strategy is a little more difficult. I mean, my normal strategy is to stand close enough to an accepted group to look like I'm with them. Not close enough for them to know I'm there. I mean, to an outside observer, it looks like I'm part of the group. This requires extreme concentration and extreme planning. Joan is in a restaurant. She has PMS and is having a major chocolate craving. She has just ordered dessert. <coughs> what is this? Carrot cake? I ordered the chocolate passion kiss. You most definitely did not because I never distinctly said anything involving carrots for you to distinctly hear. This is dessert. Who wants vegetables in it? I want what I ordered, and I told you what I ordered, and that's what I want, and I want it now. I want my chocolate cashew picks. Stop laughing. <laughs> You're a complete idiot of a way. Listen here. There are three letters that bring you unbearable suffering, and we're talking way beyond IRS, baby, and much more dangerous than STD. Those three little letters are P, M, S. <laughs> <laughs> On the high? <laughs> <laughs> 
his girlfriend who insisted on changing everything about him. Still angry and hurt, Ron goes to the Gap to buy a pair of jeans. Help me. Can you help me? Did I ask for help? No. Oh. Oh. There's that look. That, that condescending, false and compassionate. You need my help. Let me fix you since you're a pathetic guy and I'm the all-knowing female look. I'm not so pathetic after all. You women are really something. First you give us guys that sexy, you want me look, and suffer us in. Then you try to, then you get this crazy notion that you're the only ones who can fix us. Well, Miss Gap, I hate to disappoint you, but I'm not so pathetic after all. I'm quite capable of finding a pair of jeans all by myself. I've done it before. I'm a shopper, a shop E. I'm very, very shopful. So if you kindly got out of my way, hey, how did you know which kind I, but those are my signs. You couldn't have. Are you, do you want to go out sometime? <laughs> Rose has just been told by her husband, Troy, that he is going to be the father of another woman's child. <laughs> I've been standing with you. I've been right here with you, Troy. I gave 18 years of my life to stand in the same spot as you. Don't you think I wanted other things? Don't you think I had dreams and hopes? What about my life? What about me? Don't you think it ever crossed my mind to want to know other men? That I wanted to live somewhere and forget about my responsibilities? To have someone laugh so I could feel good? You're not the only one who's got wants and needs. But I help wounds to you, Troy. I took all my feelings, my wants, my needs, my dreams, and I buried them inside you. I planted a seed and watched and prayed over it. I planted myself and waited to bloom. And it didn't take me no 18 years to figure out the soil, that figure out the soil was hot and rocky and was never gonna bloom. But I held on to you, Troy. I held you tighter. I owe you everything I had, every part of me I could find to give to you. And upstairs, in that room with the dark, with the darkness falling in on me, it took everything inside me not to convince me that you're not the finest man in the world. Mm -hmm. But I held on to you, Troy, because wherever you was going, I wanted to be there with you. Because you were my husband, because I was your wife. Cause that's the only way I was going to survive. You're not the only one who's got wants and needs. You're always talking about what you have to give and what you don't have to give. But you take two. You take and don't know that nobody's giving. Bailey White shares an antidote about her mother. My mother reads things she finds dead on the road. 
She claims she has high expectations, but I don't trust her. I require documentation. I won't need it unless she can tell me the model and tag number of the car that she struck in. Mama is an adventurous and excellent cook. We are feasted not only on doves, turkeys, and quail, but robins, squirrels, and only once a snake. Draw a line at snakes. <laughs> we have a person on Ellen who comes to dinner every third Friday. We always take out the linen and polish the silver when she comes. She expects it. Last month, we sat around to an elegant meal, complete with spoiled china and Camilla's in a crystal bowl. The quill's delicious, said Mama, and I had to find a single shot. How would you manage it? Intersection of 93 and bags room, said Mama. <laughs> Greenly and Mama pickle. Florida tape. Have some more. And some rice, seal. <laughs> Eddie Carbone rails against his helplessness. Oh. What can I do? I'm a patsy. What can a patsy do? I worked like a dog 20 years, so a pump could ever. So that's what I've done. I mean, in the worst times, in the worst. When there wasn't a ship coming in the harbor, I didn't stand around looking for relief. I hustled. When there was empty piers in Brooklyn, I went to Staten Island, the West Side, Jersey, all over, because I made a promise. I took out of my own mouth to give to her. I took out of my wife's mouth. I walked hungry plenty days in the city. And now, I gotta sit in my own house and look out of a son of a bitch pump like that. But she came out of nowhere. I give him my house to sleep. I take the blankets off my bed for him. And he takes and puts his dirty, filthy hands on her like a goddamn thief. A young clothing store customer reacts to the stare of another customer in the comments of a store employee. What are you looking at? Take a picture. It'll last longer, lady. I swear, you are so rude. Excuse me for not buying my clothes at the Gap. The American dream. You too can be just exactly like everyone else with no individuality except the big American melting pot. God bless America. I will not leave this door. I have just as much right to be here as anybody else. I'm not disrupting anything. If somebody was rude to you, you wouldn't let them get away with it. I'm simply telling this obnoxious woman over here <laughs> to mind her own business. Go ahead, call security. What are you gonna tell them? Oh, there's a woman in here speaking her mind. Please get her out of here before she gets anybody else thinking. <laughs> <laughs> You're all mindless drunks. <laughs> Did you just call me little girl? <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to repress me, make me feel small. I am too large to be contained by you and your small mind. I'm out of here, ladies. A high school student has mixed feelings about his SAT scores. <laughs> Everyone's treating me different lately. It's weird. Sometimes I like it, but sometimes I don't. Like, <laughs> teachers are actually thinking I'm smart now. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe I am. I just never really thought about it. Maybe I really do have potential. 
I just hope they don't start expecting things from me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how smart people do it. It's stressing me out just thinking about it. And Haley? Haley's been acting really weird. It's almost like she's mad at me for doing better than her. I mean, before we even got our scores, I was telling her how dumb these tests are. I'm sure the SATs don't actually measure intelligence. I mean, when in life are you ever going to have to compare hatchet is the sight, or hedgehogs the cucumber, or whatever? I'm sure that stuff never comes up. It seems like a really lame reason for your best friend to be mad at you. It's not like I did anything wrong. You know what? I'm mad at her, actually. What the hell? Haley can be such a bitch sometimes, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> and I should know. I got a 1450 of mine. <laughs> Excuse me. 
my friend and I are going to find a cool club with a smart doorman now who knows that a 21-year-old woman <laughs> was born in 1980. <laughs> Whatever. Let's go, Amanda. <laughs> Madeline is mentally ill. Here she speaks to her brother, Roger. Roger? I can't dream. I don't dream anymore. We would dream so vividly, Roger. Do you remember the way we would dream together? I had trouble telling them from the real thing. I'll give them a thing for that thing again. Some of them were horrible. Oh God, some of them were nightmares. They were just jeans. And because they were jeans, and because we were together, always together, it didn't scare me. Isn't that right? You were always there with me, weren't you? During those jeans, we were dreaming together. I wasn't alone, I wasn't in control. Sometimes, it all mixes together, and I have trouble telling what were the dreams. And what were the things that really happened? Isn't that funny? <laughs> I'm not a princess, I'm not! Hell, you can go straight to if you think I'm a princess. You're 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 a princess. You're
your dad just wasn't a whole lot of fun. <laughs> Noble, sure, I grant you. But Claudius, well, he likes to drink now and then. He appreciates a decent meal. He doesn't laugh. You know what I mean? <laughs> You don't always have to be tiptoeing around because of some holier than thou principle or something. Some days, I think it would have been better for both of us if you had been the only child. <laughs> but you realize who you have to thank for that. You have no idea what I used to put up with. And every time I felt like a little, you know, just to warm my aging bones, <laughs> it was like I suggested murder. <laughs> Oh, you think, what? You think, Claudius murdered your dad. Well, no wonder you've been so rude to him at the dinner table. If I'd known that, I could put you straight in no time flat. It wasn't Claudius, darling. It was me. <laughs> Warren has been up all night studying for a test. All night studying. All night. I'm not kidding. So, driving here this morning, I thought I was going to have a wreck. I couldn't keep my eyes open and my car kept swerving, you know. So I stopped by the 7 Eleven and got the biggest cup of java. And then I see this packet that says, liquid energy. <laughs> the girl in the package has these bulging eyes like she's been up for 40 hours straight. So I down, you know. It's really gross. It tastes like coffee syrup. It's really disgusting. But I think it's starting to work. <laughs> now I have all these bazillion milligrams of caffeine coursing in my veins, and I'm so ready for this test. I'm so good at this test. And afterwards, if you want to, we can just go skip out, go to the mall, go warn yourself, go shopping, maybe go have some lunch or something. Although I'm not hungry at all. But still, the caffeine. I've been able to myself to cheat because I've been working so hard, and I've been studying so hard, and I thought I just want to go home and crash out of the test. But I don't forget any of this stuff. It's perfect. It's my face. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm not actually like, am I fooling? I guess I, I guess I just have a lot of energy. That's all. Community Counseling Center to see a therapist. It's not an upscale facility. Excuse me, I know you told me to have a seat, but did you notice that all the chairs in this room are fabric, not vinyl, fabric? Don't you realize that fabric chairs are not sanitary? There could be lice or crabs or God knows what else crawling around in those cushions. You can at least offer me some saran wrap. And what's more, they stink. Can't you smell that foul odor wafting this way? It's disgusting. Don't your patients bathe? Hang a sign. Have you showered today? Uh -huh. If not, go home. <laughs> Look, I'm here to see a therapist to talk about my issues. And believe me, I have issues. But meanwhile, Meanwhile, you're subjecting me to worse emotional trauma over this godforsaken pit of a waiting room. Now, what are you going to do about it? Okay, I'm sitting, I'm sitting. This is criminal. <laughs> <laughs> Jill is having a difficulty deciding what to pack for a freshman year in college. Yeah, Jill. <coughs> are you actually packing your stuffed animal? What do you think other people do? I mean, it's college, and 
It means that we're going to become adults. So, no. But I, I want to keep Oliver the Otter with me. He's been my faithful companion for so many years. But we will be independent. And there is a possibility of having guys in our rooms. <laughs> so, no. The critters stay at home. Except I've never spent a night without Oliver. He's warded off evil spirits for 18 years now. Leaving him here with my parents might actually be dangerous. <laughs> what, what if he starts blabbing? I don't think I can trust him here with so many deep, dark secrets. Like <laughs> what? Like what? None of your business. Do not ask him. He works for me. Oliver, you're going to college. <laughs> Natalie speaks to a grief counselor about a friend's suicide. I dropped her off that night, about a quarter to two. I should have asked her to come over, or at least asked her if anything was wrong. But she seemed normal, not happy. Exactly, but like herself. I met her freshman year, an introduction to British literature. We made each other a path. She was bitter and cynical, but still really nice. I knew she had depression, but it was weird. We had fun together, you know? I never really made sense of that. <coughs> night, we saw a play, and then we went to a midnight movie. I was nodding off through the last half of it. I'd gotten up early that morning to go running, and I keep wondering if there was something in the play or in the movie that's a trigger for some reason. Something that could set her off, you know? Something I miss. I just keep trying to look for clues, for answers. She had survived so much. Why that? James Farmer Jr. delivers an address arguing in favor of civil disobedience. In Texas, they lynch Negroes. My teammate tonight saw a man strung up by his neck and set on fire. They drove through a lynch mob, pressed their faces against the floorboards, the fear in their eyes, and worse, the shame. What was this Negro's crime that he should be hung up without trial in a dark forest filled with fog? Was he a thief? Was he a killer? Or just a Negro? Was he a sharecropper? A preacher? Were his children waiting up for him? And who are we to just lie there and do nothing? No matter what he did, the mob was Nothing. Just left us wondering why. My opponent says nothing that arose the rule of law can be moral. But there is no rule of law in the Jim Crow South. Not when Negroes are denied housing, turned away from schools, hospitals, and not when we are lynched. St. Augustine said, an unjust law is no law at all. That means I have a right, even a duty, to resist. With violence, or civil disobedience. You should pray I choose the latter. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Rodolfo, an Italian immigrant, explains to Catherine that he does not want to marry her just to get his citizenship, as he has been accused. <coughs> I will not marry you to the name. <laughs> I want you to be my wife. And I want to be a citizen. Tell them that, or I will. Yes? And tell them, and tell them also, and tell yourself, please, that I am not a baby, and you are not a horse, a gift, a favor for a foreign immigrant. I am furious. Do you think I am so desperate? My brother is desperate, not me. Do you think I will carry on my back? The rest of my life, a woman I did not love, just to be an American? It's so wonderful. You think we have no tall buildings in Italy? No white streets, no electric lights, no flags, no automobile? Only work you don't have. I want to be an American so I could work. That is the only one they're here. Work! How can you insult me, Kevin? <laughs> community counseling center to see a therapist. It is not an upscale facility. <laughs> Excuse me. Hi. Um, I know you told me to have a seat, but did you notice that all the chairs in this room are fabric? Not vinyl. Fabric. <laughs> Don't you realize that fabric chairs are not sanitary? There could be lice or crabs or God knows what crawling around in those cushions. You could have at least offered me some saran wrap. And what's more, they stink. Can't you smell that foul odor wafting this way? It's disgusting. <laughs> Don't your patience be? Hang this on. Have you showered today? If not, Go home. <laughs> Look, I'm here to see a therapist. <laughs> to talk about my issues. <laughs> and believe me, I have issues. <laughs> but meanwhile, meanwhile, you're subjecting me to worse emotional trauma over this godforsaken pit of a waiting room. Now, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> okay, I'm sitting, I'm sitting. <laughs> this is criminal. <laughs> Rose has just been told by her husband Troy that he is going to be the father of another woman's child. I've been standing with you. I've been right here with you, Troy. I got a life too. I gave 18 years of my life to stand in the same spot with you. Don't you think? I ever wanted other things? Don't you think I had dreams and hopes? What about my life? What about me? Don't you think it ever crossed my mind to want to know other men? That I wanted to lay up somewhere and forget about my responsibilities? That I wanted someone to make me laugh so I could feel good? You're not the only one with wants and needs. But I held on to you, Troy. I took all my feelings, my wants and needs, my dreams, and I buried them inside you. I planted a seed and I watched and I prayed over it. I planted myself inside you and I waited to bloom. And it didn't take me no 18 years to find out the soil was hard and rocky and it was never gonna bloom. 
but I held on to you, Troy. I held you tighter, you was my husband. I owed you everything I had, every part of me I could find to give you. And upstairs, in that room with the darkness falling in on me, I gave you everything I had to try and erase the doubt that you wasn't the finest man in the world. Because you was my husband. Because that was the only way I was going to survive as your wife. You're always talking about what you give and what you don't give, but you take too. You take and don't even know nobody's giving. A thing store customer reacts to the stare of another customer and the comments of a store employee. What are you looking at? Take a picture. It'll last longer, lady. I swear, you are so rude. Excuse me for not buying my clothes <laughs> at the Gap. <laughs> the American dream. You two can just be exactly like everyone else and have no individuality inside this big American melting pot. God bless America. I will not leave this store. I have just as much right to be here as anyone else. If someone was rude to you, you wouldn't let them get away with it. I'm simply telling this obnoxious woman to mind her own business. You know what? You go ahead and call security. What are you going to tell them? There's a woman here speaking her mind. Take her away immediately before she gets anyone else thinking. <laughs> You're all mindless drunks. Did you just call me little girl? You're trying to repress me. Make me feel small. Well, I am too large to be, to be contained by you and your small mind. I am out of here. <laughs> A high school student confronts her teacher about what she considers an unfairly low grade on a paper. Excuse me, Mrs. Grant, I think I got somebody else's paper. I mean, this is my paper, but this is not my grade. It's a D. <laughs> I've never gotten a D in my whole life. I worked hard on this paper. There must have been a mistake. You didn't like it? But there's almost no red marks on it. Can you give me a reason why you didn't like it? I think I deserve at least that. You didn't agree with my viewpoints. <laughs> well, didn't I back up my arguments? Did I not back up my arguments? I researched everything thoroughly. See, right here I wrote. It doesn't matter if you think my viewpoint is valid. This is about my ability to express myself clearly and concisely. You know what? I don't care what you think. You can't do this. I have a right to free speech, even in your classroom. This is an A paper, and I deserve my A. So until you can clearly, concisely, and logically tell me why I didn't get one, I'm just going to stand at your empty desk. mother treats her poorly and always demands to beat her boyfriend, whom she belittles and scares away. Denise finally stands up to her. 
Why should I introduce you to him, Mom? So you can rip him to shreds the second he walks in the door? You have never once approved of anyone I've dated. What is it, Mom? They're too good for me? I'm too good for them? <coughs> or is it that you hate all men since Daddy left you? Oh. Yeah, sit down. You can't stand to see me happy with someone because you're alone. So you can't live that without me. You drove him away with every chance you got. With all your partying, and your drinking, and your yelling all the time. I wanted to run away too. And now, he's gone. Not just from you, but from me, Mom. And I'll never forgive you for that. I want my dad back, and it's too late. So don't you think for one minute, I'm going to let you drive my boyfriend away too. You choose to be alone. I don't. An angry father berates his convict son. I was there. I was holding her hand when she died. Where were you? Locked up in a cage like some animal. That's what killed her. To hear the judge say that the life she brought into this world was unfit to live. That you'd, that you'd be remanded to the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections at Western State Penitentiary, there to be executed in an electric chair, this order to be carried out 30 days from today. Ain't that what the judge said? Ain't that what she heard? This order to be carried out 30 days from today, that's what killed her. So don't you say nothing to me about turning my back when I have nursed that woman, talked to her, held her hand, prayed over her, and the last words to come out of her mouth was your name. That's what killed her. Where are you, Mr. Murderer, Mr. Unfit to live among society? Where were you when your mama was dying? and she was calling your name. You are my son, and I helped bring you into this world. But from this, this moment on, I'm calling that deal off. You ain't nothing to me, boy. Ooh. dumped by his girlfriend who insisted on changing everything about him. Still angry and hurt, Ron goes to the Gap to buy a pair of jeans. Help me. Can you help me? Did I ask for help? No. 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 Oh, oh, there's that look, that condescending, falsely compassionate. You need my help. Let me fix you since you're a pathetic guy and I'm the all-knowing female look. What are really something? First you give us guys the sexy, <laughs> and then sucker us in. Then once you got us hooked, you decide everything that's wrong with us. We get this crazy notion that you're the only ones who can help us. Well, Miss Gap, I hate to disappoint you, but I think I'm quite capable of finding a pair of jeans all by myself. <laughs> I've done it before. I'm a shopper, you know. I'm a shoppy. I'm very, very shopful. So if you kindly move out my way, hey. 
Chubby Turtle was kind eye. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my size. <laughs> but you could have. Are you. Want to go watch some time? <laughs> the girl of his dreams by using his talent as an exceptional math student. run lead. <laughs> you let the tie run get to second and we lost the lead because of you. Now you start using your head. That's that lump that's three feet above your ass. 
Are you crying? Are you crying? Are you crying? There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. Roger Scornsby was my manager. And he called me a talking pile of pig shit. And that was when my parents drove all the way down from Michigan to see me play. And did I cry? No. No! Do you want to know why? Because there's no crying! There's no crying in baseball! mother and star actress Joan Crawford grants everyone. <laughs> no wire hangers! What's wire hangers doing in your closet when I told you no wire hangers ever? I work and I work till I'm half dead and I hear people say she's getting old and what do I get? A daughter who cares as much about the beautiful dresses I give her as she cares about me. What's wire hangers doing in your closet? Answer me! I buy you beautiful dresses and you treat them like they were some dish rag. You do! Three hundred dollar dress called a wire hanger! We'll see how many you got here anymore. We'll see. Get out of that bed! All of this is coming out! 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 You got any more? <laughs> Let's get to see how many wire hangers you've got in that closet. Oh, wire hangers. Why? Why? <laughs> Get out of that bed. Get out of that bed! You live in the most beautiful house in Brentwood, and you don't care if your clothes are shot back from wire hangers! <laughs> and your room looks like some $2 a week press room in some two bit backstreet house room in Oklahoma! <laughs> Get up! Get up! a Spanish-Caribbean society matron, explains to a doctor why she must commit her daughter to a mental hospital. It all started with that crazy diet. At first, she looked good. She had let herself get a little plump, and Sandy, with those fine bones, can't carry any extra weight. Then, she went away to a graduate program, so we didn't see her for a while. So one day, we get this call, the dean. She says she doesn't want to alarm us, but we can come down immediately. Our daughter is in the hospital, too sick to do anything. All she does is read. So we take the next flight, and when we get there, I didn't recognize my own daughter. Sandy was a toothpick. <laughs> she had lists and lists of books to read. Finally, she told us why she couldn't stop reading. She was being coming, turned out of the human race. And she was becoming a monkey. A monkey, my baby! <laughs> One morning. One morning, I go into her room to wake her up, and I find her lying in bed, looking at her hands. I call her name, Sandy. And she's turning her hands this way and that way, and I scream at her to answer me. And she doesn't even look at me. Nothing. And she's making these awful sounds like she's in a soup. And my son pulls up her hands to me and screams, Monkey hands! Monkey hands! <laughs> Thank 
Okay. Uh, before the judges retire to their chambers, we've got some jobs today. Oh. I would like to hug everyone here.
By the way, this is the drama monologue first. This has never happened before. Nobody got any votes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, this is the first time more than eight or nine people got votes. Fifteen of you guys got votes from your peers. I think that's a great, great thing. So everybody, I'd give you one because I thought you guys were just great. But, what was that? Trophy Nation. Trophy Nation. Okay. Okay. So, the first award of the day is voted on by the contestants themselves. We call it the People's Choice Award. As I said, 15 individuals got votes. That's a tribute to your talent. It's a wonderful thing. But <clears throat> the winner of the first People's Choice Award this year is Brendan Martinez. Time for the contestants would like to sign autographs or uh, meet with their fans for five minutes until the judges come back. By the way, I am really glad every year, especially this year, I'm not the judge. <laughs> By the way, one other thing coming up right after Thanksgiving break is the National Shakespeare Contest. <laughs> every contestant, every finalist gets a free t shirt. Be the first kid on your block with a Shakespeare t shirt. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing all of you guys involved in Shakespeare. So take a few minutes, mingle with the crowd, sign in all the crowd. All three of you guys are amazing. All of you guys are amazing.
seen the judges stay out this long. I actually thought I went out, they went out to dinner. Um, <laughs> we did, please. But yeah, this, this has just been an amazing experience. So I want to thank a lot of people. I want to thank the audience for being such a great, great I'd like to thank the parents of here for sending us such wonderful, talented, <laughs> nice kids. Thank you very much. <laughs> Our event staff, as we know, security kept things quiet back there. Victor, I appreciate that. Yeah, Vic! Victor! Victor! <laughs> like a good umpire, which I am. When you watch a baseball game, you don't want to notice the umpire. And when you watch something like this, you don't want to notice the stage crew. Did anybody actually see the stage crew? <laughs> no, no, Job, the judges themselves. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Mr. McGowan. What do you do? Nothing. Okay. There are six trophies there. There are three runner-up trophies. There's a second place, a third place, and of course, a first place. Okay. Runner-up trophies go to...
Does anybody want to say anything? Now I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I just want to take this time out to so thank Mr. Slip, who has kept this this little program running for so long and doing a perfect a per, per, perfect job. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, perfect job for so long. So I just want everybody to please just give a warm appreciation. For yeah, Mr. I do want to thank everybody for coming. Show me girls coming up. Thank you so much. Great sign, Gary.